So good morning again, welcome. I'm speaking to you from my home here in Richmond, California on behalf of the Insight Meditation Society and the Forest Refuge in Barrie, Massachusetts as part of our online retreat for the month of April. So we'll do a guided meditation uh, in a few minutes and I thought I would offer just a, a few <clears throat> Kind of reminders, some general framing around this practice of vipassana meditation. I'm really just kind of giving a little bit of an overview of what we're doing here and how some of the pieces work together, and then we'll sit. So as many of you know, this practice has two main parts from the kind of technical perspective of meditation techniques, and one part is called shamatha or calming meditation and the other is vipassana, uh, insight meditation, seeing clearly. And so the way these two work together is very important to begin to understand. Uh, they're not separate practices, each supports the other. But the function of each practice is different and how we engage the mind and relate to our experience is different uh, in some key ways. So shamatha practice, which literally means something like calming or abiding, the purpose is to steady our attention. It's to gather all of our internal resources and stabilize the heart and the mind. One of the analogies I like to use is it's like setting up a, a telescope, right? You, you need a firm, steady basis, all three of those legs in place to be able to look through and see anything. If it's not firm, if it's wobbly, even if you look through, you have this very powerful telescope, you're not going to be able to see because it's going to be shaking, it'll be blurry. So in the same way, we need some stability in the mind before we can look deeply into our experience and begin to understand the nature of who we are, how the mind functions, uh, and where our stress and suffering arise from uh, emotionally, psychologically, in relation to our world and our lives. So shamatha practice, uh, in shamatha practice, we are deliberately excluding a lot of our experience. We choose one theme or object of meditation, and we've been working with an anchor, sometimes called a primary object like the breath, certain touch points in the body like the hands or the contact with the seat. Uh, sometimes sound can be a good anchor as we've explored. Uh, even metta practice, the phrases and the energy behind them is a wonderful primary object or anchor. So we choose one theme. Other themes and other forms of meditation practice that are very common are something like gazing at a candle or repeating a mantra or uh, looking at a colored disc. Basically, any form of meditation where you are choosing one thing and attending to that to the exclusion of all other experience, physical and mental, is shamatha practice. You are calming and steadying the mind by virtue of the fact that you're coming back to the same thing again and again with a very clear and single-minded intent. When anything else comes up, a thought, a memory, plans, emotions, impulses, other sensations, memories, I guess I said that already, you just simply acknowledge it and put it down letting go and coming back, right? So that's the instruction we hear most commonly and frequently in popular mindfulness meditation is just let go and come back to the breath. That's the basic practice for shamatha, this exclusive attention whose purpose is to steady the mind. That's not the end of the practice. We use that as the foundation for vipassana. Just a brief caveat here, within that practice of shamatha, we still need some intelligence, some insight and clear seeing, right? We have to have, we have to use our wits in order to be aware of what's happening, know what to put down and what to focus on, attend to how am I practicing? Is the mind getting tight? Am I pushing too hard? Uh, is there a quality of forcefulness or contraction in my body or mind? 
none of those will actually be helpful. This calming and abiding comes from a quality of deep relaxation and natural interest, a kind of novelty taking interest in what's happening. <clears throat> so as the mind steadies, then we can begin to explore our experience. So Michelle McDonald has these two wonderful ways of characterizing the calming and insight. She talks about calming meditation as resting. So we're resting with the anchor. And, and that really captures some of the essence of this phase of the practice is it's meant to be nourishing and restful. Just the simplicity of one breath or the simplicity of being with sound, and there's nothing else you need to do. From there, we begin to look deeply into our experience, insight meditation, and Michelle refers to this as exploration, pure exploration. And again, I love that she chooses this word because it, it carries an aspect of the spirit of the meditation, which is a sense of adventure, openness. What is this? Let's explore. So. Once there is enough steadiness in the mind, I'll say more about what, what is meant by enough, we can begin to open the attention. So it's no longer exclusive, just being with one object. It begins to become more inclusive. The anchor, which we previously had chosen to be in the foreground of our awareness, everything else being in the background, just letting it be there, can begin to fade into the background and other experiences come into the foreground of our awareness. A thought, a sound, another sensation in the body, a mood, an emotion, another thought. And so the process of insight meditation is one of opening to whatever experience presents from moment to moment. And then we're studying, we're looking very closely with a quality of interest. What is this? How is it changing? How does our experience change from one moment to the next, whether it's different objects of awareness, a sound, a thought, a sensation cycling through, or one experience like an emotion of fear or grief or joyfulness, and just attending to that and seeing what's this made of? How is it composed? So what is enough stability? This varies quite a bit. It depends on your purpose. It depends on the context of your practice. Enough stability in a daily meditation practice of say half an hour is gonna be different than what we might consider enough uh, stability uh, on a week or month long retreat where you're meditating all day long. The idea is you wanna be able to feel some sense of not being yanked around by your mind every moment. And there's enough strength to the mind that you can choose to put it somewhere and it stays long enough to learn from what you're observing. And so experiment, see what's right for you. Two more things I want to uh, point to here before we move into our practice. So within the shamatha practice, two of the factors that are very important that we're working with to steady the mind are called vitaka and vichara. Those of you who have studied Buddhism have heard uh, Buddhist meditation are familiar with this. The, this is the process of aiming the attention, connecting with the object of awareness, and then sustaining it, uh, really committing fully to being with that experience. So taking the example of the breath, we become aware of an in-breath. That initial moment of, ah, I'm breathing in. That's vitaka. We, we, we get it. It's like putting a little frame around it. Oh, this is an in-breath. We kind of get that. Now what? Now you've got to sustain your attention through the duration of that in-breath. You have to fully commit to being here with just this experience and putting everything else down. That's the vichara. Another analogy that's used sometimes is it's like ringing a bell. Vitaka is the initial contact between the striker and the bell. You make contact. And then the sustaining of the sound, that's the vichara, it continues. You stay with the experience as long as it's present. It's the engagement of these two factors in the mind that helps to create the steadiness. With insight practice, those are still functioning. They're more stable because of the 
uh, steadiness that we've established through shamatha practice, we're also bringing in this key factor of Dhamma Vijaya, investigation or exploration. A question came up last week, what's the difference between investigation and analysis? This is the last point I want to make here this morning. Investigation is a quality of penetrating observation with a spirit of openness. It's not an intellectual analysis. We're not thinking about our experience, but we are engaging all of our faculties with a particular quality of intimacy to know and understand the nature of something. One of the examples I like to use is say this plant behind me, if you were sitting there looking at it going, gosh, is that real or fake? I can't tell. If you were in this room here with me and you wanted to find out, you might come up very close to the plant. You might look at it, touch it, feel it. And in those moments, you'd be using all of your senses to gather as much information as possible to answer that question, is this real? What is this? That process of observation, of looking closely, of receiving, that's investigation. So we bring that quality in insight, vipassana practice, to whatever experience it is we are observing and being aware of. This interested leaning in of getting intimate with what is this? And then allowing it to unfold to reveal itself. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. Let's sit together and I'll kind of point to these different phases. We'll do some, some shamatha practice at the beginning and then move into some insight practice in the second half. So if you haven't already, I invite you to settle into a comfortable position. You can allow your eyes to close or just gaze down at the ground in front of you. And feeling the weight of your body, the contact with the earth maybe the seat beneath you or your feet on the floor. Beginning this process of putting everything else down and maybe to begin just not doing anything. Just noticing your experience right here and now, this imperfect, messy human life. Allowing some space to be exactly where you are in this moment without needing to change it or fix it or even figure it out. We're making peace with the way things are in this practice. And that starts from the very beginning. And in your own time, feeling the body, the sensations of sitting, standing, or reclining, whatever posture you're in. using the body to begin to draw all of your attention in to your direct experience in this moment. Noticing if there are any places of tension or tightness holding in the face, the eyes or the jaw maybe that you can soften or relax just by bringing your attention there. And scanning your attention lightly through the neck and shoulders, down the arms and into the hands, again, softening, releasing any extra tension as much as is possible in this moment. 
scanning down the front, the sides and back of the torso. Seeing if you can feel within the torso, the organs and viscera. Allowing the belly to be soft and open. Seeing the pelvis and hips. Scanning down through the legs, all the way down into the ankles and the feet. And just feeling your whole body resting on the earth. Right now, for the next 20 minutes or so, there's nothing that you need to figure out, accomplish, get, or have. Giving yourself the gift of this time to just rest and be. And as you sit quietly in this very simple, relaxed way, beginning to notice your anchor. So for some of you that might be your breathing, just noticing that the body is breathing. For others, it might be particular sensations in the body, touch points like the hands, contact with the chair or the whole body or any other anchor like sound or metta. And beginning to lightly rest your attention with that experience, just letting it come to you. And setting a firm, clear intention, making this resolve inside. For the next while, anything else that comes up, just going to put it down, deal with it later. And gently return the attention back to the simple experience of this one anchor, the breath, the body, as it is for you. There's a moment of noticing, connecting with the object. And then sustain the attention, lingering, really tasting and receiving the experience. Allowing yourself to lean into the simplicity of just being with this one thing, putting everything else down one moment at a time.
it's helpful, you can use a soft mental note to keep track as you breathe in. Feeling the sensations of breathing in, just noting in. And as you breathe out, feeling and experiencing the sensations of breathing out and noting out. Once you begin to feel some measure of steadiness in your heart and mind, you can stay with that anchor, say for three breaths, more or less. And you can begin to open your attention, starting to include more of your experience, letting go of the exclusive focus on the anchor and just noticing what naturally calls your attention. If nothing else is stronger than the anchor, then you just stay with the anchor until something else comes into the foreground naturally, a sound, a sensation, a thought. And then bringing this patient steady, interested observation to that experience just as it is without trying to make it go away, without trying to fix it or manipulate it. And studying and observing it from the inside with a direct and non-conceptual awareness. What is this experience of being alive right here and now? Staying with the experience as long as it's predominant until it's replaced by something else or fades into the background and then allowing your attention to return to your anchor or to whatever other experience is more predominant and naturally calls the attention.
taking things one moment at a time, living from moment to moment without judging, without evaluating or comparing clear and open, choiceless awareness. From time to time, you can check to see how you're practicing. Are you bringing these qualities of friendliness, patience, interest, resolve that we've been exploring? And so we study not only what is happening, but how to relate with a balanced and wise approach. So learning this delicate poise of presence without grabbing on and without pushing away, living from moment to moment.
taking your time to transition. Opening the eyes and your other senses slowly. Bringing your attention back into the room where you are. <clears throat> Maybe looking around, bringing some movement into the body. All right. Thanks, everyone. Nice to see you again. I'll be back tomorrow morning uh, at this time to offer a talk. Have a good rest of your day.